Welcome to the Company of Women International. We're presenting to you the Beauty from Ashes TV program. And I have something that is going to be so interesting for you to see. And that is Sue Bassett, my guest, who is a synchronized swimmer. And I'm not interviewed anybody in regard to synchronized swimming, but I had such pleasure in looking at a DVD that she gave to me to look at. Um, at it was a, a competition, and how all the different swimmers had different music. It's mm -hmm. just like you're dancing. Mm -hmm. uh, and they would do their little routine, the different uh, songs. Correct. And you did your um, solo. Okay, solo. that's right. Oh, it was a solo. That, yeah. I was trying to think of what yeah, I would solo, call it. Yes. Um, and what was the music that you used? Uh, music was How Great Thou Art with C.C. Winans was the uh, main piece of it. I had some other pieces in that she had done too. Right. But it was a combination. Generally, when you do synchronized swimming in competition, they want they the judges like to see a different different types of swimming, uh, like in a dance routine or when you watch skating. They like to see some slow music uh, things mm -hmm. and you, how you interpret that and then to get some stronger pieces. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, that whole, I think that that choice of music had so much to do with where I am in my faith right now and I think that was, I believe, what possibly caught your, your interest too was not only the synchronized swimming part of it but the part that I'm realizing for the first time uh, that the gift that I have in that sport of synchronized swimming is really God's gift to me and, and that it's time for me to yeah. to share that with other swimmers. And it really is. It's, it's quite a gift that he's given to her. Um, take me back to when you got started in synchronized, in synchronized swimming. swimming. What got you going in that? Uh, well, I was in a college in uh, Vermont, and they had it was a two-year college, Green Mountain College. It was a women's college at the time. And uh, I've just always loved the water. I was brought up around the ocean, and there was always something to do because waves were always coming at me. And we could jump in them and play in them. And um, in a pool situation, I never there wasn't a whole lot to do but swim back and forth. I've never mm -hmm. enjoyed that all that much. But I'm very comfortable in the water. And there was a water ballet group that they had uh, as part of the school. It was an after-school or after-college type of thing or uh, after-class activity. And I just connected with it and mm -hmm. found it to be quite fascinating mm -hmm. and liked the idea of trying to different do different moves in the water. And I've mm -hmm. always enjoyed music. And so to be able to fit those movements to the music was was just mm -hmm. really fascinating to me so I began and did two years in college came out of college and there was a local uh, group uh, called the Ridgewood Aquacons in New Jersey where I lived at the time and um, I had always thought of them I mean knew of them but they were they would perform in different areas and uh, as entertainment almost and um, so I tried out for that t that group. It was not a team. It was not competitive. Mm -hmm. And now they were not a, This was like a a special group. They were just not out of a school or something. Right. It that was got just it. a group that the got together. The people who liked mm -hmm. the same thing liked came the sport together. And, yep. Came, mm -hmm. when it really wasn't a sport at that time. They did once a year. They would do a water ballet show. And so but we pick, considered pick a sport a theme. now. Is now it, not? it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. 1984 was when it was first uh, introduced into the Olympics. Good. And it's now an Olympic event. Um, That's right. I yeah. had forgotten mm -hmm. that. Yep. A duet. I think they do duet and team now. Mm -hmm. Possibly trio. I'm not sure which. There are a couple of different events. Mm -hmm. But it is a very demanding sport. And I think for me it was a challenge. I've always been a competitive person. I've always been in a lot of sports in high school. And that was just uh, just very fun to go from it being a water ballet thing to someone saying, well, can you compete in this? And I said, I have no idea. <laughs> and we went and we pursued the look, look at it and found out that it was a competitive sport and said, let's go do it. Would so. you ever guess that she would be competitive? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so. poking fun at you, Sue. I know, that's okay. Okay, uh, so where did you go from there? Well, uh, I started, I, I did, I was with the water ballet group for quite a few years um, when my children were growing up and I was still married at the time. Uh, I then divorced and I was still involved in the group and it just seemed to fill a void. I really enjoyed the, the, the camaraderie of the women as well mm -hmm. as the swimming and the music and, and uh, it got to the point where with that it did, just didn't have enough for me and I, I really found out that you could compete and thought I wanted to be a little bit more out of the flowery hats and the tapping strokes. I really wanted to get into more uh, precise movements and mm -hmm. so forth and I had seen some of it and thought I think I'd like to do that so what I did was at that point I was divorced and and lived a little bit further away uh, I was in New York but very probably a few miles from the from the uh, Y that I had originally done it mm -hmm. in and I chose a couple of the women that I thought might be interested in pursuing the competitive part so there were five of us 
and we got a routine together and found the first competition that we thought an invitational. And in master's competition, I could preface that, it's ages 20 to whatever. We have women right now that are swimming at age 85 that are still swimming. Yes, I saw one yep. on the Did DVD, you? and <laughs> yeah. I thought this, well, I don't know that she was 85, but... I mean, yep. she all was age an groups. older lady. Yep, and you and she did within, a beautiful job. Correct, and you compete within your age category. So right now I'm 62, so I would swim 60 to 69 age category. So mm -hmm. I would not be swimming against a person in their 30s. Mm -hmm. So it it becomes you know it, it is a competitive thing, and everyone it's just a really fun thing to do. And I think to to kind of get back to my connection with the swimming now is that it's such a pleasure. I used to get very, very nervous, but now I can, I can go out because I know that I'm glorifying God every time I step mm -hmm. in that water, and, I, and he comes with, with me to that deck. I, he walks mm -hmm. out with me, and I can, I, I just, I'm anxious to look for the next piece of music that I feel will speak to those people watching me swim. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think now, that's she just has very said exciting. something that um, she feels as though this is a gift from the Lord, and um, for a number of years you did you did not embrace the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, no. You mm -hmm. had two daughters that mm -hmm. were, they were rather on your heels, weren't they, trying to get you well, to come to the Lord? a little bit. And, and I think with my background, too, um, just to backtrack a little bit, I was brought up in a community, co uh, community college, community um, church. My dad helped build it. I uh, always went to Sunday school, did all those things. Uh, but I ne we never had a Bible in our house that I remember. Um, but I do know that we went to church. Um, that was just with what you Where did. Where was the Bible in church mm -hmm. and not at home? No, I don't remember ever seeing a Bible at home, I, although I know I had one because there was, again, a competition to find all the Beatitudes in the Bible. Yeah. And I managed to, we didn't have the computer then, mm -hmm. so you couldn't go and just type that into a special <laughs> website and say, well, here they all are. You had to physically look through the Bible. And the unfortunate thing is that I looked through mainly for that word blessed. I didn't, it didn't do, I don't think, mm -hmm. what it was meant to do for me at that time. In other words, you rather thought you got it by osmosis, huh? <laughs> I guess, yeah, I guess. But, I mean, I think that you you also, I felt very, I, I couldn't say loved by the Lord. I just, I mean, I just knew there was a Jesus. I knew G who Jesus was. I heard the stories. And I was a, I did everything that I thought was the right thing to do and was a good little girl in school. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I don't ever, at that but time, never thought. you had not developed a relationship with the Lord. No, 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 not at all. I, I, you know, I mean, I would sing the songs and I would, make sure I made sure my two daughters went to church and I made sure that they were confirmed in the mm -hmm. church and I made sure that all those things occurred mm -hmm. you know because I knew that was you what were you doing should do all the right things I was doing all the right she's things she's got to get to heaven on her work absolutely <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh, are any of you doing that I had a ticket I knew I was going to go to heaven <laughs> and so when my daughter went to Clemson University and um, she came home one Christmas um, is this Terry that's Terry my older daughter and she was very, I mean, she was born again, and she was going to let me know it, and she wanted, and I, I think with that fever, I understand it now, being where I am with Christ, but mm -hmm. it came at me way too strong, and I, it just completely turned me off, and I was, I mean, I couldn't stand it, and I said, look, don't tell me I'm not a Christian, don't tell me my parents aren't in heaven, I don't want to hear it, okay, mm -hmm. done, whatever you're doing, that's fine, it belongs to you, and, and she, it took her a while, but she pretty much backed off and I think what she grew grew to realize is that she needed and I'm realizing that now too is that you just need to walk the walk you need to you need to be that mm -hmm. that child of God and that that eventually it came through she pray has prayed for me for 17 years to come to Christ mm -hmm. and my younger daughter for 10 so that's a lot of praying for their mom and, and right. I think for your those people looking today uh, at us and, and in this conversation is to know that that, that it doesn't matter what, what age. God has his timing as to when you're mm -hmm. to come to him and, and when you open your heart and that happens. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's been a long time, you know. Well, tell me how these girls pushed or pulled or however. You, how did you come to, to the relationship of the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, it was, um, I think, over the years. Uh, and my daughter, had, of course, had gotten married and she uh, became involved uh, with Youth with a Mission uh, as a family. I didn't know anything about that, that she then had the three children. And the children would come to the home, to our home, of course, to visit and everything. And they would want to know if I knew Jesus. I mean, they would come up and say, Grammy, do you know Jesus? Grandma, do you know Jesus? And I'd say, of course. We all, everyone does. <laughs> I mean, I was very confident. 
<laughs> but they would come at me. You know, each one of them would say uh -huh. that to me. And there were things where I know there were certain programs that Terry would be very offended if we had them on. And I thought, oh, f please, you know, this is, it was just interesting, the different things that I look back on yes, now yes. and now completely understand because there's programs where I'll, I'll literally walk out of a room. I don't care to be around them because they are just not godly and I don't, mm -hmm. I feel comfortable around mm -hmm. them anymore. So mm -hmm. I think that's part of what happens to us when we, when we suddenly open our heart to, to Christ and, and do that. But and when we open our hearts to Christ, you see, then we become very much aware of those things that we are seeing and hearing uh, and experiencing that are not of Christ and that don't have that love of the mm -hmm. Lord in it. And it is hurting the Holy Spirit that's within us. Mm -hmm. And so um, maybe this will help a lot of you to understand uh, why people uh, react or act the way they do when there's testimonies to be given and um, when you have someone in your home just like Sue was mm -hmm. um, you have a program on and they will walk out of the room uh, don't be angry with them just love them and know that they're very sensitive because exactly. when you come to the Lord your spirit very is different. very sensitive. Yes it is. It is. Tell me more about it now Sue. Um, well that went on for quite a quite a bit of time and it's interesting because my younger daughter ended up being the ally. I had no idea that she in fact just till you invited me to do this I wanted to know when did they come to Christ and I was actually quite surprised because my younger daughter knowing me as well as she did she was my ally somewhat against Terry, like, okay, so what is she thanking Jesus for this time? Or, mm -hmm. you know, oh, a parking place. Well, that's really, yeah, sure, I'm sure Jesus had a lot to do with that. Uh, but, uh, so she knew my heart. She knew do for you to ride in my car. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so, you know, it, it was interesting because Terry, I had accepted, and again, she, Terry's my daughter, and I, and, and I love both of my daughters so much, and when they choose to do something, I would not be not supportive of it, but I really didn't understand it. And I, mm -hmm. and as, as she is in Sweden now, she's with Youth with a Mission. Her entire family are independent missionaries, and they are living on donations only, which I can't even, it's so hard to fathom that. The people mm -hmm. really do that. They give up everything for the Lord. Because so they I, know and they trust God mm -hmm. to provide and meet their needs. Right. But and I, he does. Yep. He does, and it's and I've watched that, but it's taken me a very, very, very long time. Yes. So, Vicki was pretty much, you know, we'd be on the phone because she lives in Georgia, and we'd be talking and like, oh, yeah, well, Terry's doing this and that. Well, it really began, for, well, began, I think, the final, the final... Um, showdown. Showdown, <laughs> yeah. Began in 2002, and um, my daughter, Victoria, had invited me to a conference in Georgia, and it was a, somewhat of a big deal. It was with her, uh, her mother-in-law and her sister-in-law, and I knew that they were... Um, religious and so forth and I thought oh I bet this is a religious conference I she never told me who it was that would be at the conference <laughs> but I accepted because I adore my daughter and that was something that two of us were going to do together so I accepted the con to go to this conference that was in the end of 2002 and this was to be 2003 in September I believe so that 2003 began and that year began like any other year didn't think anything special of it uh, it began really with I think Vicki also saying mom I've had a lot of issues with weight over my over my many years of, of being here and she 